Well, HIV is a chronic infection. That is, it's something that stays with someone for life. There are people that have other complicating factors that, it, that make them more at risk for developing other problems. Uh, in particular, African-American men or men of color, it's not so much that they are more, that, that they're more susceptible to HIV itself or to its consequences, but oftentimes these individuals have other chronic problems. They may be diabetic, they have problems with hypertension, high blood pressure, other chronic problems that interfere with, that will reduce their morbidity or increase their morbidity and mortality. So it's not HIV itself. I mean, HIV is, is, if it's treated and people are doing well, it's not gonna cause a problem. But the other problems are, are, going to, are going to take over. So for example, I have a number of patients with diabetes, and these are men with, with HIV, they're African-American. They take their medication, they've been undetectable, their HIV is in complete control, but unfortunately they develop diabetes and they've developed the consequences of diabetes. Uh, two I can think of right off the top of my head are on dialysis. Uh, one's had multiple, two amputations. I mean, these are horrible consequences, but they have absolutely nothing to do with HIV. So there's, there's that. Now there can also be populations of people that just don't have access to HIV medication, and if their HIV is not treated or controlled, that could be a complicating factor along with diabetes and hypertension. So it's not that people, with, uh, people of color are innately more at risk for complications than HIV. It depends on other factors. HIV, medic, HIV medications work beautifully no matter who you are. You have to t have access to them and you have to take them. But that aside, there are other complicating factors, as you say, socioeconomic factors or other health factors that, that can reduce life expectancies in other populations that have nothing to do with HIV itself. Well, I think that we're looking at, when we look at the differences between uh, the white population and people of color, you know, what kind of differences are we talking about? Some are biological, you know, there's some are some biological factors, but, but generally it's going to be um, socioeconomic. Or if you don't have access to medication, for example, you're going to have more, for HIV medication, you're going to have more complications from HIV, obviously. Uh, so w one solution is to try to, you know, create universal access. Now this, this probably has to be done on a federal level because state to state there's so much variation. I don't know how that's going to happen, but that would be one, you know, one way of dealing with it. Uh, the other is access to care. So if people are in rural communities and don't have access to regular care, they have to travel hundreds of miles to get it, that's going to be a deterrent. So somehow getting people to have greater access to care is going to be, is going to be crucial. Making medications, you know, the affordability of medications is, is sort of an artificial issue in a way because it's determined not simply by the pharmaceutical company, but it's also determined by what insurance companies will pay. So that's an issue that is something that's, that, that is sort of a little bit opaque in terms of how to manage it. So people say, well, if the drugs are $3,000 a month, that's a lot of money, but $1,500 a month is a lot of money too. So we're not talking about you know, terrific differences in cost between various HIV medications. They're all very expensive, but being able to ensure that people get access to them is, is critical. So. HIV is a sexually transmitted disease. It's like gonorrhea, it's like syphilis, it's like chlamydia, it's like herpes. These are diseases that have been around for long, you know, for centuries, perhaps thousands of years. So sexually transmitted diseases themselves are just not gonna go away. HIV, the only way HIV would go away totally is if we somehow had a, uh, had a vaccine that prevented it. But that would require, uh, you know, a, a type of uh, diligence that we haven't able to, be able to solve with polio, for example. I mean, polio is a disease that we should theoretically be able to, um, you know, to expunge, but we still can't do it. So being a sexually transmitted disease, HIV will always be around. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to kill people. If we have adequate treatments for it and other, or preventive the therapies, I mean, HIV will, and will not cause long-term problems for people. But like any STI, it's going to be around. It pr probably will not go away. I think I'm optimistic about HIV treatment because over the decades, it's gone from no treatment to amazing treatments. I think even if people have to take a single pill for the rest of their lives, that's pretty miraculous because you've taken a universally fatal disease and turned it into a chronic infection, and not just simply a chronic infection, but one that has almost no physical consequences. People are just doing beautifully on these treatments, and then, and many, most of whom can live a normal lifespan. So that to me is just, that itself is optimistic. Is there going to be a cure? I don't know, 
I, I would never say it's impossible. In, in the 19th century, people thought they you know, could find a cure for tuberculosis, and or other people thought it couldn't happen. But 80 years later, there, there's there's a cure. I mean, so to sit here today and say there will never be a cure for HIV would be would be folly. But what form that will take, I don't know. But there's re research continues. There's not a flagging and people being interested in trying to solve this problem. And so I feel optimistic that at some point something will be found that will eradicate this virus. Relying simply on treating people who are infected and depending on people who are at risk going on PrEP is not sufficient to, to stop this epidemic. But in theory, it could be stopped if everybody infected took their medicine, everybody at risk took medicine also, but that's just not gonna happen. But I, th but I think that given the advances in science, I think someone, someone or some people are gonna find some ultimate solution for this problem. I think in terms of what new things I would like to see in the future, obviously I want to see a cure. I mean, that's what I really want. Sure. Um, I think anything, be it, anything up to that point is inadequate. So there will be different treatment modalities, like there's some talk about giving injections to people with, uh, with HIV so that they can take medication every three months or more, once a year. That's just a variation on the theme. People still have to take medication. So to me, until there's really a cure, we're not going to see any great advances. We'll see some tweaking of our treatments and maybe fewer, fewer and fewer side effects, but I don't see any, you know, to me, nothing is going to be equal to a, a cure.